On Second Shot, we tackle two new headlines every week to find out what kind of wisdom the world is dishing out today. And we want you to be a part of that. When you see a headline you want to take a second shot at, or if you're looking for advice, or just want to tell us what you think of the show, email us at secondshotcast at gmail.com. If you like what you hear, rate us on iTunes. This helps us move up in the ratings so more people will see us. And if you want to hear more, subscribe to the show so that the new episodes will get straight to you every single Friday. We love you. Thanks for listening and enjoy. There's a lot of news in the world today. News that might surprise you, startle you, upset, or maybe impress. News that's not always for the faint of heart. That's why the man who failed his way to success, Heath Oaks, is stepping up. Tackling today's headlines with ignorance on fire in a way only a millennial mogul can. Take off your sport coat, grab a beer, and enjoy the conversation. This is Second Shot with your host, Heath Oaks. You know what? If I could have one... like pick in life it would be to have josh's hair (laughs) like honestly when i look like and guys if you're listening go to youtube and watch and just look at josh's hair he has got the most like the man we don't have this like oh we don't have a camera on i got you yeah i got you okay hold on yeah turn it around just so everybody can see josh's hair oh yes all right josh (laughs) see that hair shake it shake it that luscious mane oh look at that that's just oh (laughs) yes there you go he's been working on that for a while so that's gotta go everybody's gotta youtube you gotta go look at his hair i want that hair like i and and i'm no, I, w- I won't have that. Like, it doesn't happen the same it's way. solid. I well, would rock it if I could. He must yeah. take biotin. See, and I want to cut my hair, though. <laughs> Why? Wow. I do take biotin. Yeah, <laughs> obviously. Bio-tine. Yeah. It's also good for a prenatal, but for me, I use it for hair. <laughs> yeah. So what's up, everybody? Look, we got, if y'all, if you know, a familiar voice that we hadn't heard from her. She's done too big for us now. Hey. You know, she's too big. She's a big wig and all. But, Kristen, welcome back I, to the show. I'm so glad to be back. You know, I heard... You guys talking about me a couple episodes ago, oh, yeah. and I, I figure I better come happen. back so I can defend myself. Exactly. Here. <laughs> and we got uh, we, we got we got Zach and and then Josh Josh here as well yes. with the hair. Yeah, Josh Josh with the hair. <laughs> kind of like Josh that. Sampson, Josh the Sampson. Yeah, like I, Sampson from the Bible. I guess. Sampson was a great character. He was. Yeah. 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 The w- women always got in his head. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he lost it all with. Popular with the ladies. That was yeah. Sampson. Ethan, <laughs> how's your week been? My week has been good, you know. Uh, just kind of, I, I'm trying to get in the flow for the year, and yeah. it's been it's been difficult to get in the flow, you know. I've got a lot of things going, like I got like a million things going on that n- that have none of them have got started yet, mm-hmm. but they're all there. Like, and it's just these a lot of people that need to do their part. Yeah, and it's, it's about to make me go bust. So like it's, I'm gonna, it's just, wanna just go. like the idea of having to start that planning is just building up and building up. Well, it's up. all there. I just need this person or that lawyer or whatever to do their paperwork. Oh, and like, <laughs> there's all these like, you know, waiting on. And waiting so there's like a lot else. of projects yeah. that I, when they hit, it's going to be a nightmare. And it, then the anxiety of when they do start, it's it's crazy. Yeah. But I'm just ready to get the year and rolling. And of course, they'll all respond to you at the same time. At the exact same time. Yeah. Right. You'll never fail. one Friday afternoon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it'll be fun. Two hours. It'll be fun. Hey, what, what, what's this first one we got, Zach? The first headline you threw me in. I, I'm going to be honest. I don't know where you're going with this, but I want to hear it. Reba McIntyre is KFC's new Colonel Sanders. Okay, I've not heard anything about this. Yes. You haven't? How <laughs> no. did you miss this? I don't know, but uh, that that's a strange pick. She, yes. <laughs> like the honky-tonk uh, Smoky Mountain barbecue chicken she's the Colonel Sanders for. Right. They're, they're promoting that's not her, neighbor. is it? Yes. That, that is her yes, right there. that's her. Yeah. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, KFC, well. the Kentucky Fried Chicken, of course, the fast food chain, announced the fancy new Colonel Sanders today. Country music superstar Reba McIntyre is next in line to fill Colonel Harlan Sanders' shoes, becoming both the first globally known musician and the first female celebrity to play the fried chicken chain's iconic mascot. Heath, what, what do you got about First this, First of this all, one? before I go into what, I, what, what I'm getting out of this is, yeah. I want everybody to understand, I love Reba. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I Putting am it out there. a it massive first. Reba fan. Love Reba, okay? Yeah. Oh, she's great. So I honestly don't believe this about her. This Uh is just something that hit me with the story. Okay. Okay? Does that make sense? Yep, yep, yep. Sure. No judgment on Reba. No judgment on Reba. (laughs) It is purely the the deal that I got from, which is, you know when people talk about uh, all attention's good attention and stuff, and I feel like in today's world people are trying to do, they're doing things, they're getting more outlandish to get attention. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Versus just being them. I don't think that's what... Look, Reba McIntyre is Reba McIntyre. She don't need attention. But KFC. Yes. KFC needs some attention. Mm-hmm. Um, and Reba's Reba. Reba's a legend. Okay? 
this ain't I don't think she's doing that or that or anything it just something that that just kind of hit me in general in today's world there's so many um people they're getting more that the kid that literally went in and filmed in the person dead in that suicide forest in Logan China Paul, yeah you yeah, know, like like filmed that somebody course, yeah. dead. Not like you yeah. were like that would to get attention. You're willing to do that, really? Mm-hmm. And you know, and today, I think of understanding. You don't have to pat yourself on the back if you're doing something good enough, mm-hmm. consistent enough. People are gonna know. It's going to be known. Like you don't have to go out there and try and 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 create something even more outlandish and more outlandish. Be consistent and be who you are, and it either catches on or it does not. Or you get congratulated or you do not. But, like, these cra- the craziness people are doing, you don't have to. Yeah. If you are a badass, mm-hmm. I mean, we got to bleep that. My pastor's listening. <laughs> <laughs> if, if, you, if you are, keep this in here because this will be funny. But if, honestly, the, the deal is, is you've got to be good. If something you're doing not getting pat on the back, you're not that good. Get better. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah. It's, I, I'm confused, number one. Like, why is there a new colonel again? I feel like they just got a new one they not always, too long th- ago. Well, I think that's what the new thing is, is they're doing all these different colonels. They're just colonels. switching it up. Yeah. And, and the second question. So, Reba, as a colonel, you just showed me the picture, and I didn't even know that that was her. Yes. I, I would have thought that was a guy. You know, she, she's dressed up like the colonel. You can't tell that's a female. So, when she does the voice, can you immediately tell that it's Reba, or is it, like, a whole, just a new alter ego for the colonel oh i guarantee you you know it's i, I guarantee it's a girl oh, so I it looks like she's singing they, they i guarantee her, so yeah i guess yeah, yeah, you, you know. know it's her hmm. yeah interesting yeah. you know it is we were talking about this on another show we do about how the internet i think and our current culture kind of drives us to try to do things that are bigger and better than other people because when you look at a site like youtube what do we see we see viral videos which are things that are very entertaining or very funny and it's just the that general public has, has one risen it to the top. Right, yeah. yeah. You have to do something incredible or amazing to be seen, to get somewhere. That seems to be kind of where we're at. No, but you don't have to. That's just it. Right. Here's the thing is that person whose video went viral like Chad, okay, like Chad will tell you. Two years of putting videos out before everybody, oh, he was an overnight sensation. He was two years putting videos together. Mm-hmm. For two years nobody thought his stuff was worth a crap. Right. Nobody sees And then all, all of the a sudden that, that one did catch on so it, he didn't do anything different they were all sitting in his truck mm-hmm. he didn't go out there and go film people in in suicide forest you know what i mean sure like that that's another level of 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 just like pittiness like it's just horrible to do he was consistent right and he had good stuff right it just took time he mm-hmm. also that's what happened he also didn't just strike a viral video overnight yes. he worked hard and eventually got there it that's, eventually there's a whole other lesson there and, and but, all of know. this stuff that people that are funny like i love watching some of the funny videos yeah. those people though are consistently putting good funny pranks out there mm-hmm. and they're nothing that is the outrageousness they're just good and funny <laughs> you know yeah but i come from the old school way that i'm a, well in in here's the thing is Kristen and 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 uh, well, I mean, no, we're we're same age basically. Um, <laughs> Zach, yes. for instance, you know, really at the beginning of your career and all, if you work, if you're not getting the uh, a praise or the attention or stuff you want from work or anything, for instance, yeah, and you have to realize that you're not doing enough good enough job. Right. That's that's what I want to come into people's mind is that it's not that so and so is not paying me attention or I need to um, really like you know. You start spouting off at people, you start cussing someone out, or you get crazy because you're getting mad and frustrated. What I want people to know is that if you're not getting the attention you want, you got to go. Your first uh, thought needs to be, I'm not doing a very good job. Mm-hmm. I got to be better. I got to get more. I got to do something better. Not, hey, hey, look at me. Pat me on the back. Pat me on the back. Oh, and go tell everybody how good you are. Mm-hmm. You don't need to go out there and tell everybody to justify it if you're secure enough that you're doing the best you can. The people that would go out there and go, um, Hey, look at me. Look at me. You need to say something to me or the people that have an insecurity because they're not doing their job. Right. And the fact is, it's it's easy to kind of stay in your current position and say, well, it didn't work out because this or that. It's easy to assume that outside elements are the reason you didn't get what you yes. want. It's hard to take it, take personal responsibility and say, yeah, you know, maybe I maybe I missed the mark on this. Maybe there's something I could have done, but you're better for it. That's growth. That's mm-hmm. how you get to be a better person. Well, and it's and it's also it's the like don't stop yourself from 
going out seeking attention. Mm -hmm. It's the worst thing you can do. Like if you've ever met somebody, say I met you the first time, Kristen. Okay. How many times have you ever met somebody and um, you walk away and you're, man, I love that person. And then if you ever have that happen, if you think about it for a minute, that person didn't talk at all. You probably talked the whole time. <laughs> and you have no idea who they are, but you, lo but you liked them. Because that person like asked you questions to engage, mm -hmm. and you don't even know anything about them. But you just really liked them. That's the thing is, is you, the same thing with attention. If you go out asking for it and you want to tell everybody how good you are at everything, let somebody go tell people how good you are for you. That's when you know you made it. So when those come into your mind, just say, it's, I'm not doing good enough. It's not everybody else's fault. I'm just being weak right now at my job. Get better. Get better and let others bring attention to you. You don't need to go out there and create that attention yourself. So... We'll go on to the next one here because that, that, I mean, but Reba, I love you. <laughs> I'm a Reba fan, okay? We'll be back for the second segment of Second Shot. He's a suit and tie kind of guy with deep southern roots. He folks hosts more of Second Shot coming up on RNCN. You guys have been listening to Second Shot and hearing us talk about it. You need to go pick up my book, Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. You can get it on Amazon in a paper book. You can also hear this beautiful voice of mine in audiobook style on Audible or anywhere you're going to get your audiobooks. Guys, this book took a lot of time to put into it, and I believe it can really be some life-changing stuff to help you on your path to success. And hopefully you're going to fail your way to success just like I did. Ignorance on Fire, A Journey of Felling Your Way to Success. Amazon.com, Audible.com, audiobooks, paper books, everything. Get it, share it with your people and i appreciate it thank you guys go pick it up today ready aim fire second shot is back for another round on rncn now if we're gonna have the video going the whole time when we come back i need to get a wig like josh <laughs> like how funny would that be if i put like a wig on that was like josh when we come back from video if somebody's watching it it's like bam like there i am with like <laughs> The full blown Jerry the curls, luscious lock, not Jerry curls. They're just luscious locks. Oh, luscious locks! I yes. imagine the Heath wearing Josh's hair would look kind of like Aragorn from Lord of the Rings. Wouldn't that be hilarious? Ooh, Can you imagine like me second? with that hair? It'd be great. It, Sign me I up. Can't, it would look great, but I'm looking great. forward to seeing <laughs> that. Would be it. Um, <laughs> there's. I don't stand a chance in God's green earth into getting hair like that. I don't. Mine's straight as an arrow. Like, Your hair my hair's good, though. My hair's straight. Like, it doesn't, like, it won't. When I tried to grow it out when I was a kid, you uh -huh. know, I wanted to do it. And, like, like, just a like, surfer. It kept like. going out like this because it just was <laughs> piling on top of each other straight. See, well, that's, a, that's a Texas humidity. That'll, yeah. That'll he, know, my hair did that, too. It's called argon oil. Get some argon oil <laughs> every morning. Oil. Yeah. Oh, man. Josh, Josh has got the, the, yeah. products. the products. He's in there, like, with five products on, blow drying his hair, like Bio Fabio team. style. You think <laughs> this is easy? Yeah. No, sir. No. You don't just wake. Wake up in the morning and piss yeah. excellence, Josh. Exactly. <laughs> I try hard at it. <laughs> All right. Now, now this next this next headline is, again, it just has some really really solid points in it. Yes. That that, that yes. I mean, I know we're going to beat the Nick Saban Alabama thing down. I mean, but but it is very phenomenal what he has been able to accomplish. And this little article is pretty good. Alabama's Nick Saban has a 24-hour rule that will put you ahead of the competition. Why Alabama's football coach only gave his players one day to celebrate the national championship. There's a lot to unpack in this article, and frankly, I'm not sure the headline does it justice. No, really, it doesn't. At its core, what this is about is about Nick Saban being obsessed with competition and rather but it, but than being the, but passionate the, but, but read this part, part at the top part, Zach, and it says... Uh, uh, Whenever he points it out to the winning, right, and he says uh, he tell he told the players what to to go out or something. Right, Saban doesn't focus on outcomes as much as he focuses on competing and being all that you can be, and that's why he gives himself and his players 24 hours before they have to get back on the grind. Move on, he says, because there's another challenge. You created a target for yourself in the future in terms of people who want to beat you. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. When you win, all you are yeah. is the next competition for, right? for somebody now else. Now you've got a big target on your back because now everyone's going to want to exactly. one-up you. Exactly, yeah. Now you're the team to beat. Uh, and, and now go back down and read that one paragraph that talks about it from the event, that, that one with the golf thing. Yeah. Saban isn't passionate about football. He's obsessed with competition. The difference between passion and obsession often separates the good from the great in sports and business. Passion is great, but obsession is better, Nick says. After all... I'm passionate about golf, but I was never obsessed enough to practice 10 hours a day, which is what it takes to play on the pro level. You know what? I thought that was so intriguing. The obsessed with the competition 
versus like the national championship or anything else like like just the art of competing mm-hmm. and how passion versus obsession because yeah you're right you know you can have a passion and you can like golf but it, it you know to be a pro you can have all the natural ability you want but you're gonna have to be obsessed 10 hours a day to actually ever you have do to have it. the drive to be a winner well, you, that in that in that category enough, right? Like, mm-hmm. right. like he's like, I, I got a passion for golf. I like golf, but I don't, I don't have it to compete at the level I do coaching football, right? Mm-hmm. So, like that, that's the difference. And I, I got to tell you, this has always been a struggle of mine. Mine is always, I've had a struggle, and I had a leadership coach that, um, and 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 I have a leadership coach now that she's really helped me even more with this than ever is. I had a problem with not really focusing on the journey aspect, and it was the the comp the, the end goal. Like, and 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 I, unfortunately, unfortunately, achieved those um, milestones quicker and pretty often. And then I would go like um, I would have no drive. I, I would go blunt, like, okay, what now? Mm-hmm. And it was killing me. I was riding an up and down roller coaster because you didn't have your next goal. I yeah, yeah, it was like, oh, I got it, right, got it, bam, hit it. Like, oh, be number one in the country, think you take forever and do it right off the bat. It's like, oh, my God, now what? Right? Like, you, yeah. you go. And so it has always been a struggle of mine. Mm-hmm. So as I talk about this, I'm letting you all know this is not my strength. A hundred percent. I am. I, I would set goals, and if I got them, then, then I would be on this roller, emotional roller coaster because it's like, okay, well, now what? I needed, always needed something change and something different to keep me going. And so I've been f- lately – really in the last couple of years in a big way trying to focus on it and whenever i read this it hit me the most because it goes the competing so like like that's what i've got to get my drive i've got to remind myself daily to be in that competition not the outcome right mm-hmm. and, and that's what a lot of people's success grew up is that they forget that they need to focus on that day-to-day competition that journey aspect versus the outcome like like you can't control the outcome right you can, can only control what your daily actions are mm-hmm yeah, Does that make sense? I, no, I think there's absolutely something to that. It's it's not necessarily putting the cart before the horse, but it's understanding that, like, stop looking so much at what the reward is and keep looking at the game you're playing and what you're trying to do to get there. Focus on what's in front of you and less on what's ahead of you. And before you know it, you'll probably end up getting what you want. Well, it, it's the competition. Focusing on, like, got competing to, to be, to continue to be there. And, like, and how you got to find that. You got to dig deep and find stuff in front of you with that. Like, because what do you do when you, that's what happens is, is when, when those people that, that achieve these big goals you see that, that are still end up, like you look up and, you know, there have been people that have committed suicide that you, everybody thought was on top of the world, right? Mm -hmm. There have been people that have, um, that, that all of a sudden lost everything after they were on top of all these levels. We can count them countless peoples, right? But they weren't obsessed with competing. Mm -hmm. They were obsessed with their outcome. Right. So this is a a weird analogy, but I I think this works really well in the world of fitness. They always talk about how group fitness is more successful than personal fitness, because even if you're setting goals for yourself personally, you don't have that drive to compete. Whereas if you're in a room of people and you're seeing them, you're all pushing one another. And that makes total sense. Yeah. 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 No, it's true. That, that that I've never heard of that with the fitness thing. I've never been much into fitness. Well, Besides been, fitness, my studies. burger in his mouth. You're they've fit, done you're studies fit guy. to show that, you know, like if you're in a group fitness setting, you're more likely to achieve your goals quicker because because of that com- competition. Well, and it, and it is. There, there's, um, I, I believe that Nick Saban probably has one of those kind of inner drive things of that competing, you mm-hmm. know. But I believe we can all get that. Like, and, and that's what it talks about is, you would think that Nick say, you know, because when people go, well, why does he keep coaching? That you're somebody who don't understand competition. Mm-hmm. Because it's, yeah, he's got six national titles. Titles. I mean, you can literally say of all time, no matter if it's pro or college, Nick Saban is one of the all-time greatest coaches. And anybody could argue he is the best. Like, you can. He's there. Yeah. He makes $10 million a year. But what he would say is... Well, you know, if I retire today and I walk away with, you know, six championships, then tomorrow someone's going to come up and unseat me with seven. So I've got to keep working, right? Well, and he finds joy in that journey. Mm -hmm. Like, he finds joy in that competing every day. Like, he finds joy in competing. He doesn't find his – I mean, yes, he loves the national championship, but the joy and passion comes from the day-to-day grind. Like, like if you're going to go and do business for yourself or – or you're going to start this new job, right? That maybe you're starting off at the bottom of the totem pole. Mm-hmm. Okay, psych yourself up for the 
competition of getting to that next level. Like, psych yourself up for looking forward to that journey of making that one next step. That one, like, psych yourself up for blowing your boss's mind with the best creative thing, doing the extra work that other people do. Like, psych yourself up for the competing through that journey, not to be the CEO of that company, you know, down the road Mm -hmm. and say, I worked from the mail room up, right? But focus on that one step of the competition. Like, like have fun to compete. Compete daily to do something to where you don't have to be recognized yourself. Somebody recognizes for you, right? And and John Maxwell, I heard him talking about it one time with, he was talking, uh, his grandson was going to uh, start a new job right after college, and he asked, asked John, and John Maxwell is one of the greatest leadership coaches of all time. And John, they said, well, what, what, do you, what did uh, uh, his grandson come and ask him for advice? What does he do? He said, here's the deal. Show up 30 minutes early. Take your lunch break. Do it only in 30 minutes. And in that 30 minutes at lunch break, listen to a podcast or something, learning more about what you're currently doing, like whatever it is to, to get better. Mm-hmm. Stay 30 minutes later than everybody else. Simple. Do it. Because here's what's odd. 30 minutes early, nobody's there, right? Except for what? Every now and then, that's whenever the big boss would be, and they'd see him. Mm-hmm. He could say hi to him. He's different. 30 minutes of lunch and learning while you're at lunch instead of chatting with people, learn it to get better, and getting back in 30 minutes later, separated himself. Like, that little bit of 30 minutes separated himself so much from the pack, it's unreal. And that's what he did. He found that one thing to compete mm-hmm. against all those colleagues to separate himself. And that wasn't even massive. That's not like he sacrificed his soul. He showed up 30 minutes earlier than everybody else. Mm-hmm. Nobody else is in that building. Yeah. So he got more time with the bigger bosses than everybody else because he's the only one there. Mm-hmm. Like, that's huge to me. And I think that's what you've got to want. You've got to want to compete. You've got to want to, whether it is um, if you're starting your own business, be, be ready. It's three, five, seven years of competing that the outcome may not be good mm-hmm. for a while. But do you think that's something that you can teach, or do you think competition, that drive is innate? I think everything can be taught at some point or another. Do I think that some people have more natural ability that – if you put the natural ability with a very strong work ethic, that they can be this next level great legend that's always remembered, yes. Do I believe that everybody has the ability to be a legend? No. I believe that there's some people that don't have it naturally that mm-hmm. are, have learned and taught it to where they can be great in that area. Mm-hmm. Um, may not be legend because to be legend is – but like me, for instance. I've got a lot of drive and discipline and all that. Mm-hmm. Loved football. But I did not have the God-given ability yeah. okay, that goes along with that. Mm-hmm. So I went to a 1A school where I was able to play nonstop because there was only 30 people on the whole football team. Mm-hmm. I was able to play and have fun. Mm-hmm. But my drive and all of that alone wasn't going to get me to the NFL. Yeah. I'm still not 6'4", mm-hmm. and I don't run a 4'240", uh-huh. right? Mm-hmm. So the same thing. Mm-hmm. That's where I think it goes into plays that uh, – but I was able to be a good high school player. So – you can do both of them. I believe that sometimes you just may not be legendary, mm-hmm. but you have the ability to learn everything, I believe. So we'll come back here to the third segment of Second Shot when, when Zach's calling me down. <laughs> now that's what I call ignorance on fire. More of Second Shot with Keith Oaks still to come. Hear ye, hear ye. Great news for all of you guys. Colonial Life is hiring some salespeople from all over the country. No matter where you are in the United States of America, if you're looking for a sales career, if you want to just learn more about what Colonial Life does, send an email to mbeltran at colonialife.com. M-B-E-L-T-R-A-N at colonialife.com. We'll get you set up with the right people you need to talk to and see if maybe if you're going to win that job. If you're in the Metroplex area, great. If you're in St. Louis, great. We're going to have office there for you. M-B-E-L-T-R-A-N at ColonialLife.com and change your career today. Kick off your boots or suit up. The choice is yours. Welcome back to Second Shot on RNCN. So kind of going back, it was kind of interesting. We were talking to Kristen, and, and as we were talking about earlier on building relationships and talking about how a lot of people will sit around trying to tell about all the great things they've done versus asking questions and how a lot of times when you walk away from a conversation you go man I really love that person if you think back you were the one talking the whole time and they were asking you questions and listening and it kind of goes that that that's a key part about building relationships is is asking questions being interested in learning about others Mm -hmm. and and just 
listening and and people will love you you even got to say a word and they'll they'll know all your accomplishments for you and so as we were saying that Kristen was like oh so so you know jerry go by i want to bring him in here tell the story so i'll let Kristen kind of yeah yeah so um jerry acuff is, is someone we work here with at rncn from time to time and uh he's got this really great story about relationship building as you were telling that story Heath, i was like oh my gosh jerry just popped into my head and he happened to be in our office at the same time so i wanted to bring him in so he could tell his personal story and and jerry's actually rated you know one of the top five sales professionals in the world. And I feel like you and Jerry share a lot of the same ideologies. And so I just wanted to kind of get the conversation started because I, I think it's going to go great places from here. So uh, Jerry, thanks for stepping in to join us. Well, thanks for having me. I, you know, I've, I've written three best selling books on relationship building, but it's, it's how do you build a valuable business relationship with someone that you don't naturally connect with. Yeah. If you naturally connect with somebody, you don't need me to tell you what to do. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But 75% of people we meet, we don't naturally connect with. I also have a virtual training program that teaches all this stuff here. But but it, it, it really hit me one time when I was on an airplane in Chicago, and I'm sitting next to this guy who I recognize from television. And the first thing he said to me when I sat down was, I hate to talk to people on airplanes. <laughs> and, and that I'm, starts it off really right, good. Yeah, hey, reason, but at least you know where you stand. <laughs> exactly. Right? And so I, I'm thinking there for a minute, you know, and no one's ever said that to me before. Yeah, yeah. So I said, well, okay, Jerry, you've written three best selling books on relationship building. I accept your challenge. Yeah. <laughs> so before we put his earbuds in, I said, say, man, can I ask you a personal question? Now, I would suggest to your listeners, that is a brilliant question. You can ask it almost any time. Say, can I ask you a personal question? 99% of the people will say yes, and then you can ask them whatever you want. How would you wind up living here? What made you decide to be a realtor? What made you decide to sell life insurance? What made you decide to get interested in this, et cetera? And he said, yeah. And I said, haven't I seen you on television? And he said, yeah, what did you see me on? He said, well, I got this whole series uh, on A and E, and I said, "Well, tell me about it." And he did for three and a half hours. Yep. And when we we landed, he had never asked me my name. He didn't ask me where I live. He didn't ask me what I did for a living. Nothing. He stands up. He looks at me and he says, "Say, man, where do you live?" I said, "Well, I live right here in Phoenix." He said, "You and I got to get together. You are the most interesting person <laughs> I've ever met." <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it funny? It's amazing. He sent me all of his books. He sent me, you know, his tapes and stuff. He's a brilliant guy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I said that's a perfect example of how you build a relationship with someone you don't actually naturally connect with. The thing I try and get people to understand, and I say if, if I could summarize my books in one sentence, it would be, it ain't about you, it's about them. Yeah. And, and the easiest way to make another person feel valued is to simply listen to them. Yep. And what we want to do is just – talk to them we're dying to talk and and you know there's lots of natural things going against you because you you think faster than you, yeah, you, you talk and and so you know listening is not that easy to do most of us only use about 25 percent of our ability to listen but if you can actually zero in on that other person if you can have a genuine curiosity and but, but that's that where it goes back to you have to have a genuine curiosity yeah because genuine. It, because if you are practicing just asking questions because that's what people told you right what happens is is it comes off so clearly that you really don't care anything that you're asking me right and that's why in my in my sales book i wrote a book called stop acting like a seller start thinking like a buyer yeah um, and my second chapter is intent is everything. And if my intent is to deepen my understanding, I never ask a question unless I'm trying to deepen my understanding of who you are, how you became who you are, what you think, or how you make decisions. Yep. So my intent is always what I call pure. I'm never trying to sell you because I don't believe in trying to sell anybody anything. I believe that it's our job if we're in sales to get people to buy in. Absolutely. And if you're good at what you do and they need your service, mm-hmm. you probably don't know it when you start, mm-hmm. then you can get people to buy in. But you can't do that unless your intent is, uh, and how is fu- pure. How funny is it in sales that salespeople will get freaked out and they automatically go like pitching their product versus what I try to teach is when you get freaked out, just ask more questions. Like right. don't go to the pitch because if you don't ask, the, if you don't ask questions, if you ask questions, they're going to tell you what to sell them on. Right. They're going to tell you everything you need to know, but they always freak out and miss that part, which is the most important. It's like if if you did everything else, if you did, if you were horrible with your product and all, but at least you asked questions, 
I mean, you're going to get a lot further wrong. Right. No, I, I was I was checking in at the Wynn Hotel, and I was speaking to a thousand people there about last year. And this woman says to me, "Hey, what are you speaking?" Of? I said, "Sales." She said, "When well, I'm in sales, I said, what do you sell?" She said, "Final uh, insurance, you know, final, final expenses." Expense. And I said, uh, well, how's it going? She said, not very good. So I said, well, I'll send you a copy of my book, and if it helps you, let me know. So she calls me back and says, I read your book. It's powerful, but this ain't what they teach me. I said, well, what do they teach you? Well, they teach you. They give you the leads, and then they teach you to go knock on the door, find your way in, and then sell them hard and close them. And I said, uh, well, why, why can't you do that? She said, it's just not me. And I said, do you want me to tell you how to get more appointments? She said, yeah. I said, here's what you do. You get the lead. You call the woman, and you say, Miss Johnson, this is Tamika. Um, I make the, 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 the decision that this is obviously important to you, yeah. or, or you wouldn't be sending this to us, okay? Yeah. So uh, I'd like to come by and actually give you this information, but I want you to know before I come exactly what our visit is going to look like. Yep. So here's what's going to look like. I'm going to walk in. I'm going to hand you the information you requested, and then I'm going to ask you three questions. At the end of those three questions, I'm either going to leave or you're going to beg me to stay. Yep. Can so can we can we come can can I come by next week? Now she got tons more points. Now her next question to me was, well, what are the three questions? <laughs> I said, well, the first question is. There's no right or wrong answer to this question, okay? But when you're thinking about final expenses. You know, do you have a lot of money saved, a little money saved, or no money saved? And, and there's no yep. right or wrong. Now, if they say they got a lot of money saved, you shouldn't be there. Yeah. If they say little or none, say, okay, here's question number two. Question number two is when you pass unexpectedly, obviously your family would be grieving, but who would that responsibility fall to? Yeah. And they're going to give you a specific name. And I said, and your third question is, so let me ask you this. If it falls to Sandra, your daughter, then how gigantic a problem financially would it be for her to have to take on your final expenses? Yep. And if the answer to that is a huge problem, then you and I need to talk. If it ain't a huge problem, get the hell out of there. Yeah. It's just that simple. Well, and it all goes back to what we talked about, which is the asking questions. Um, there's a book that I love that, that helped me in a tremendous way here. It's called Change Your Questions, Change Your Life. And, and it really kind of walks a lot through that, but it was as – as salespeople and and as as humans we we all like to talk right. everybody does i don't care who you are and in order to kind of change those up to build more relationships because building relationships are healthy for everything above and so you've got to ask more questions everything about it is ask more questions get to know people more just ask questions and they want to talk everybody wants to talk so ask the questions and it it's a it's like you said that it's a perfect example you know it's the, kind of taking that person who says i won't buy today no matter what getting them to buy like we on the airplane saying i hate talking to people on the airplane by the end of it it was then it was just a challenge for exactly. you you know that's what's interesting um, but we kind of got us a nice little uh, uh nice little added uh, bonus feature on today's podcast when jerry able to come in i appreciate it so much thank, thank you. you for taking the time um to come in and share a couple of pearls of wisdom for us. Um, and I, I have a feeling that's going to help in a big way. And I think if people keep focusing on that, asking questions, it's going to change a lot of things uh, because a lot of people don't ask enough questions. Well, the more you know about a customer, the more likely you are to get them to buy into what you want. Absolutely. And the only way you can know anything about them is asking questions. Absolutely. So, uh, Jerry, thank you so much. We thank appreciate you, it. Zach, Josh, thank you guys. Um, so, of course. At Heath Oaks at Ignorance on Fire. Remember, guys, secondshotcast at gmail.com. Send us an email, questions, um, you know, ideas you've got or anything. We're coming up on our first year on the show, and we've clipped over 60,000 subscribers. So, um, we're, you know, we're trying to get that 75,000, you know, by the end of February. That's what we're going to need all you with. Leave us a rating or a review. Share it with everybody you know. At Heath Oaks at Ignorance on Fire, secondshotcast at gmail.com. Thank you all, and I love you all.